Good morning. We are group 3 and we are here to present about topic number 2, maintain hand tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Part 1, inspect hand tools and equipment received in illustration. Learning objective number 1, check list of tools and equipment to be requested for job requirement. What is it? It is a list of tools and equipment to be used in your illustration project. Why is it needed? Because the first step to maintain your items is to actually know them. Keeping a list would be very helpful to do it. How? So there are two ways to list, horizontal list and vertical list. So first, horizontal list, ito yung, it's like how it is written in a book. So, separated by commas lang yung words. So, pag sinulat mo siya, pencils, comma, colored pencils, comma, crayons. So, separated by a comma, yun yung keyword. Sa vertical list naman, vertical siya, so patayo, mula taas, pababa. Ito yung favorite ko kasi, di ba, kung makikita nyo, mas organized siya kasi mas madaling basahin. Sa isang linya, isa lang yung nakasulat, tapos yung susunod na word, sa susunod na linya na, tsaka, Pwede mo pa siyang number yan. So, pwede mong sulatan ng numbers yung mga items mo para kapag chinecheck mo kung kompleto pa ba o hindi, madali mong ma-identify kasi bibilangin mo siya 1, 2, 3, ay, nasa na yung 4? Nawawala yung 4? Di ba mas madali yun kaysa tandaan mo yung pangalan ng bawat items mo? Parang hirap pa ata i-memorize nun. So, vertical list, patayo, and mas madaling basahin. Learning objective number 2. Inspect the condition of all the requested tools and equipment. So, inspection, what is it? It is a careful examination, typically to assess the condition or discover any shortcomings. Why is it needed? The purpose of this inspection process is to verify that all of the needed tools and equipment are free from any damage or defects to ensure proper and consistent production when the illustration starts. Any devices that show any defect should be repaired and replaced as soon as possible to avoid the risks of creating defective products. Your drawing materials can determine the overall success of your finished artwork. If you don't know how to take good care of them, you also ruin what you are doing. Also, to ensure that all equipment is safe before use. So, syempre, hindi lang naman gamit yung dapat alagaan. Kailangan yung artist din. How? So, itong inspect the condition na to, in relation siya dun sa checklist kanina. Kasi, syempre, kapag sinicheck mo yung mga gamit mo, mas nakikilala mo sila. So, pag kilala mo yung items mo, alam mo yung condition nila before. So, mas compare mo siya sa condition nito after some time. Kaya nga naman talaga, nasa first step talaga ang checklist. Kasi, paano mo malalaman kung ano yung changes kung hindi mo kilala yung items mo, ba? Part 2, Use and Maintain Hand Tools, Measuring Instrument, and Equipment. Good morning everyone, I am Marie Fransamonte and I am going to discuss about the assessment of hand tools and equipment and safety procedures. Now, let us start with assessment of hand tools and equipment for proper operation and safety. It is how you select your art materials and how you handle them. You must first know the art materials or tools and equipment that you are going to use in a particular artwork that you are going to make. Assess if those tools and equipment are safe to use. Common sense is not enough. Every tool can, con can cause us danger. So we must be very careful in using any tools because it might cause harm to us. Even if we already know how to use them, but still there are chances that accidents may happen while using them. It's not just the things that we should take care of, but we must also include ourselves. So we must follow safety procedures in order not to hurt ourselves and others while we work. So we are not just talking about the materials that we use itself, but we must also consider ourselves, people, and the things that surround us while we are using them to keep our safety. So in order to keep our safety, there are some procedures or precautions that we must know and follow. 
So let's now discuss safety procedures. All flammable and hazardous solvents used must be kept in closed containers and stored in the red fireproof cabinet after use. When flammable paint is still in its original container, there are solvents present in it. However, once it's been applied to a surface and dried, the solvent evaporates and the scent you can smell when you're painting a room is the scent of solvent evaporating. So in a room with conve good ventilation, this can be dizzying but not lethal. So when we say lethal, it is sufficient to cause death. But if you are painting a windowless room, the doors close and you are there for several hours, it could be toxic and damage your respiratory health in the long run. So here are some of the examples of flammable or hazardous materials. So the first picture is a fixative and the second picture are spray paints. So fixative, it is a chemical substance used to preserve or stabilize biological material prior to microscopy or other examination. So ito yung ginagamit kapag after mo nagpaint sa isang canvas or kapag after mo magdrawing gamit charcoal or oil paints or mga pastel i-sprayan mo siya ng fixative para hindi na siya mas much so yung spray paint I think alam nyo naman na yun, na paint siya pero in a spray type next oil based paints so there are paints that are water based and those are not flammables so yung oil based paints naman, sila yung mga flammable. Kaya, dapat ilayo natin sila sa mga bagay na nakaka-pag-produce ng fire. So, we must really know and be aware of the tools that we buy and use so that we could avoid accidents or something bad that may happen. So, there are also paints that are not really toxic. What makes them toxic are the solvents that are used there. So, hindi lahat ng paint ay toxic pero yung mga solvents lang talaga na ginagamit or yung chemicals na ginagamit doon sa paints or nilagay doon sa paint, yung talaga yung toxic. Next, safety procedure. Solvent soap rags must be placed in an approved self-closing waste disposal can that is emptied on a regular basis. So as you can see in the picture, he is putting the rag inside the can. So kailangan patuloy tayong ilagay sa isang lalagyan yung mga basahang ginamit natin dahil kung saan, if kung saan saan lang natin nilalagay, eh baka magamit pa sa ibang bagay na hindi dapat at makapag-cost pa ng harm sa kanila. Next, for varnishes and thinners, please use labeled, labeled mason jars. Keep containers sealed or covered when not in use. Do not use food or beverage containers such as coffee cans. So as you can see on the left side, iniwan na lang yung brush dun sa taas ng container or dun sa loob ng container. And then sa right side, ito yung tinatawag na mason jar. So pwede nyo ilagay yung mga varnishes and thinners na natira pa para magamit pa uli and then lagyan nyo na lang ng label para hindi siya mapagkamal ng pagkain next use the least toxic pigments possible do not use lead or carcinogenic pigments the classic example of a toxic inorganic pigment in painting is white lead or flake white basic lead carbonate it lead pigments can cause anemia, gastrointestinal problems, peripheral nerve damage and brain damage in children, kidney damage and reproductive system damage, and other inorganic pigments may be hazardous, including pigments based on cobalt, cadmium, and manganese. Next, never try to spray fixative by blowing air from your mouth 
through a tube. This can lead to accidental ingestion of the fixative. And lastly, don't blow up excess pastel or charcoal dust with your mouth. Instead, top off the built up dust so it falls to the floor or paper on the floor. Good day everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to clean your illustration materials. Number one, rules of thumbs. When transporting your tools and drawing, carefully put your media away in cases. Charcoal is very volatile and rubs its pigment on your paper and on the table. Not to mention, graphite pencils, color pencils, and pastels, which roll, fall, and break. Try as best as you can to keep your workspace clean. You should always have a clean, dry rag or absorbent paper nearby to wipe your hands. Second, carrying your tools with lids. The lids in graphite pencils and color pencils often break even inside their wood casings. Protect them from shocks. When working with several pencils at once, avoid constantly laying them down and picking them up again. It is better to hold them in the hand that you are not using. Clean your erasers. If your erasers soils your drawing, it means it's too dirty. Clean classical erasers by rubbing them with a cotton cloth or washing them in a soapy water. Don't forget to dry them before using them. Lastly, fix your media. Charcoal, dry, sanding, and chalk are all unstable media. To preserve your creations, fix them on the paper. Good morning everyone! Sa video na ito, I will discuss the uh, malfunctions of drawing tools and hazard while doing technical drawing and painting. So, so pa, um, sa malfunctions of tools, ito yung mga tools na hindi na hindi na mag uh, magfunctions or malfunctions na dapat natin ayusin na kailangan ayusin so narito yung mga common tools ng pag drawing at pag painting so sinama ko na rin yung painting para sa additional uh, information na lang din so so total it is ano naman ni art for so, yan. so 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 ngayon meron tayong pencil colored pencil chalk and uh, uh, pencil colored pencil chalk and things so, sa malfunctions of pencils, kapag uh, sobra naman yung pagtatasa, nag-break yung end of the tip nito. At sometimes, hindi maiiwasan na malaglag sa color. So, same din sa colored pencil. Ngayon din naman sa colored pencil. Na kusang nag-break yung lid niya. So, lalo na kapag nag-drop din natin sa floor or malaglag natin sa lapag. Kaya, avoid dropping them. Yung pencil is more on made of graphite rather than lid. So, ang color pencils naman ay yung iba doon gamit nila is lead. Pero, ito yung non-toxic naman. So, sa color pencil, mag-add mag lang sila ng pigments. Ano ba yung pigments? Yung pigments, ito yung colored material na hinahalo doon sa color pencil. Kaya, kaya nakikita natin, iba-iba yung mga kulay nyo. So, sa chalk, so, sa chalk naman, malfunctions, kapag nababasa sila, alam naman natin na kapag yung chalk nababasa, hindi na siya nag-work masyado. Kaya, i-avoid din yung mga colored chalk or yung mga chalk na mabasa natin. So, sa paints, sa paints naman, karami, kar, uh, karaniwan or common dito yung, yung mga function niya is yung blistering and chalking. So, sa, blister, sa blistering, yung nagbababos yung paint, 
At yung choking naman, yung makikita natin sa larawan. So, yung choking and blistering. So, punta naman tayo sa hazards ng mga to. So, sa hazard ng mga ito, ang pencil, kailangan natin i-check yung mga pinagagamit, pinagagamitan natin sa pagtatasa. Dahil pag sobra yung nalalakhan na dust particles sa pencil, so yung charcoal, nagkakaroon tayo ng lung, lung diseases. Chronic lung diseases. So, sa colored pencil naman, uh, wala namang hazard dahil sa company, ito ay hinald na non-toxic tsaka ginagamit ito ng mga bata. As uh, kanilang mga color mater coloring materials. Sa chalk naman, sa colored chalk, So, consider din na merong hazard kasi sometimes may mga, yung mga tao na merong asthma. So, syempre, pag nag, or nag ano sila, meron silang problema sa mga dust particles. So, yun nga, kailangan pa rin natin uh, ingatan yung mga nalalangkap natin. No, kaya, piliin natin yung mga product na less particles lang, or less, less dust lang. So, sa paints naman, ang hazard, yun nga, yung toxic pigments na naamoy natin. So, kaya yung toxic pigments, kaya ang precautions na meron dito is gamitin natin yung least toxic pigments. Gamitin na, wag natin gamitin yung lead or carcinogenic pigments. Yeah. So, kailangan ingat. Uh, so, dapat natin maingat or i-check yung mga bagay na kailangan. So, next naman is malfunctions of tables, chairs, easels, and pallet. So, some chairs and tables na panagagamitan natin, eh, hindi tayo comfortable. Kasi yung iba, wobbly, magalaw sometimes, at hindi natin namamalayan na kapag bigla tayo umupo sa chair, di ba? Tapos, sira na pala yung chair. So, kailangan natin i-check. No? Para hindi siya magkakaroon ng destruction. So, common problem naman sa table is that yung hindi siya flat surface. Kaya pag, uh, so before we start our work, sa mga artwork talaga, so, need natin na need nating alamin kung ano yung uh, yung dapat na gawin. Kasi pag hindi flat surface yung table, so syempre maaring mabako yung yung pinaggagamitan, yung dilalagyan natin doon sa pinagdrawing na natin. No? So, kailangan flat surface siya. Yan. So, um, sa, sa same din sa easel. Yung, ito yung, yung easel naman, ito yung ginagamit sa ano nang painting. So, kapag minsan unstable yung easel, magalaw, maaring maiba yung gawa natin, yung art. So, dapat naka-place siya sa proper na lugar para hindi siya magalaw. So, tapos yung, so yung palette naman, yung palette malfunctions naman dito is yung malalaglag siya. So, kapag nag-paint tayo, so, syempre, pag mga oras or two hours kang nag-paint, tas two hours mo din bang hawakan yung palette, syempre hindi. So, dapat ilalagay mo din sa lalagyan kung mayroon kang mga lalagyan or ano. So, yun. Tsaka, some palettes are hazardous. So, dapat piliin natin yung uh, malinis, no? Kasi may mga contaminated chemicals na, na nakalagay sa kanila. So, so, much safer gamitin natin yung clean ones. So, next naman is yung malfunctions of ruler, brush, razor, and sharpener. So, sa malfunctions of ruler, may mga company pala na... na yung ruler is hindi accurate or measure, hindi precise yung measure. So, yung hazard naman ng ruler is, uh, minsan, yung ginagawang horseplay ng mga bata. Ginagawa nilang uh, laruan. Ayan. So, so, sa brush naman, ang malfunctions dito, kapag nagpipaint tayo, tapos nakalimutan natin i-hugasan. Tapos, tapos, nandun yung paint, kasama dun, tapos natuyo yung brush. So, syempre, parang, iba, ano na yun, iba na yun, parang hindi na yun. So, tingin natin, hindi natin magagamit. Pero, may mga paraan naman, ways, na, na dapat, na dapat ibabad natin sa vinegar. So, may mga ways naman dyan, eh, para malambot siya at mawala yung paint. O pintura na nakadikit dun sa brush. Uh, so, and, so, yun yung nga yung sa brush, pag mag, nakalimutan natin patuyuin, tapos, nag-harden siya. Ay, hindi, nakalimutan natin i-hugasan, tapos, nag-harden siya tapos natuyuan yun. So, yun nga, ibababad natin sa vinegar. Ang hazard naman sa brush, gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, syempre, kapag na, kapag, sina, kapag ka naamoy natin yung chemicals ng paint. Yun. Kaya piliin din natin yung least toxic na paint. So, sa eraser, naman, ang common malfunctions is that need na ilinisan yung eraser. Kasi pag hindi natin nilinis ng eraser, tapos once we use it, So, na, napapangit yung, ano natin, yung papel. Napapangit. So, nandun siya nakadikit lang. So, dapat nating linisan. 
So, ang hazards naman ng eraser is nagkakost nagka nagka ito ng bacteria or polybacteria. So, nagkakost ito ng polybacteria. Kaya, kaya i-avoid din ito sa mga bata na paglaruan nila kasi ito nga din ay isa sa mga hazard. So, it's a sharpener naman. Ang nagkakost ng mampansyon kapag nasa-stack yung blade doon sa sharpener. Ay, nagsa-stack yung lead. Yung, yung lead, ito yung nasa pencil. Uh, Na-experience naman yun eh, na whenever you do na mag-sharpener kayo, may mga natatanggal na ano ng lapis, tapos nasa-stack dun sa blade. So, pag na-stack yun, hindi na yung nagagamit yung sharpener. So, ang gagawin nyo, i-check nyo, tanggalin nyo. So, sometimes, may mga iba na kailangan talagang tanggalin yung blade. No? Kasi sometimes may iba-ibang kasing klase ng eraser. Siyempre, kailangan natin maingat kasi pag tinanggal natin yung blade, Ma, ito yung ano yun, matalas to eh. So, kailangan natin, so, kailangan tayo mag-ingat. Kailangan natin mag-ingat. So, yung pastel problems. Next is yung pastel. So, yung pastel, so, sa pastel malfunctions, alam natin na soft pastels often break or crumble, crumble easily. So, the solution is maghanap tayo yung mga box na naka-separate doon yung mga Uh, soft pastel para maiwasan yung pagka-crumble easily niya or madumihan ba ngayon or, matak or maputol. Ayan. So, ang hazards ng pastels or mga crayons naman na ano natin or any other coloring materials is that yung kanyang lead lead chromate yellow or lead chromate. So, nagkakos siya ng lung cancer. Pero yung hazard na ito, ano lang naman, accident pag accident mo siyang malunok So, yun, nagkakaroon na tayo ng lang cancer. Kaya, iwasan din ito sa mga bata. So, kaya, naka-place ito sa maayos na lamagyan. So, sa color pen, lastly, sa color pen naman, ang malfunctions nito alam nyo yung ano, leaking, yung nagtatae. So, karamihan sa mga color pen, sometimes sa mga ball pen, no, nagli-leaking. So, so, kaya before we start our work, i-check natin kung nagli-leaking ba yung color pen o hindi. Kasi, pag hindi natin na-check, tapos bigla natin nilagay dun sa artwork natin magkakos ito ng uh, before your art natin, papangit your art natin. Ayan. So, para ma-check natin, mahalaga i-check, i-check din yung quality ng color pen na bibili natin. So, mahalaga din yung quality, pati yung sample. O kaya, as a sample before we order. Ayan. Tapos, yung hazard naman, keep out of rich children. Kasi, if ever na mag-leaking yung pencil, ay yung color pen, is, syempre, baka makain yung ink. Baka makain yung ink. So, yun yun so baka makain ng mga bata kaya avoid to reach out children so ang aking conclusions para maiwasan ng mga ito sabi dito, we must always check and identify malfunctions and strange events to prevent and avoid any accidents or unwanted events so so, ayan, so para ma-avoid yung mga accidents yun nga, i-check natin yung mga malfunctions so, at saka pagkatapos na ito kung ma-identify natin yung malfunctions as kapag may mga nangyayaring strange events, i-report natin agad sa custodian. So, if ever merong strange events na mangyayari. So, i-report natin immediately as soon as possible. So, let us proceed now to valuing the essential questions about maintaining hand tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Number one questions. Why is it important To check the list of tools and equipment needed before working on your illustration. Knowing your tools and equipment help us to ensure an organized workflow of our art. Instead of spending your time finding for lost items, lost pencils, eraser, ruler, or any other artwork materials, you may spend your allotted time on improving your work rather. Number two questions. Why do we have to explain? inspect the condition of all our tools and equipment it is important that we need to inspect the condition of all our tools and equipment on a regular basis in order not to put at risk the quality of our artwork and to maintain and preserve the quality of our illustration tools so number three questions why is it essential to assess the tools and equipment before using it It is essential to assess the tools and equipments before using it in order to not be disturbed while we work later on. And if we assess it earlier, we could do something about it on how we handle those before it affects the quality of our output.
Next, is it important to follow safety procedures in illustrations? Yes, just like any other task or work. It is important to follow safety procedures before we work in order not to hurt ourselves. Then, is it necessary to clean our tools regularly? Yes, of course, so that our things will last longer and maintain the quality of its good. And lastly, what should we do in case of a mishap happens? Accident may not happen if we always identify malfunction of our tools so that strange events and accidents may avoid in case of this. Don't forget to report immediately to a property custodian or any authorized personnel. And last of all, stay calm and deal about it. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Have a great day ahead.